Subsurface utility information. <clears throat> no pretty pictures on this one, just words. But what I wanted to show to you, there is this new thing called the subsurface utility information, which lots of, lots of things on it just recently, then it sort of went a bit quiet. I'm not certain what happened there. But um, <clears throat> it's a new Australian standard for Australian New Zealand, AS54882013. And it was there to get people to start thinking about the quality of the data. I'm just going to go through quickly to show you some of the things from the actual definition and the standard, because you have to pay for it, so this way you get to do it without paying the money. But basically, <clears throat> there's a whole lot of quality levels, and it's really D, C, B and A. So it only took about half a million dollars to put this together to come that can have D, C, B and A. But they're very important because they're telling everyone what to do. So it's mainly for subsurface utilities, but you really good thing it can work for anything that, hey, you should have some sort of quality. And what these sorts of things are, it just gives you a level of what they mean by these uh, different quality levels. Uh, they have this idea of an absolute position where you can say exactly what it is with a coordinate or just relative to something else. So we often have just relative, you know, a certain thing there at a certain distance below or from it. <clears throat> There's also a tolerance it introduces that you know how far you're actually from it. Things that most of us think, oh, that's fairly straightforward, but people collect data and never ever mention these things. So they also have attributes. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and uh, you hear the word attribute and also metadata. Metadata is supposed to mean data, meta information about data. So we tend to say attributes, but in some of these things they actually talk about them as differently. But basically it's just information, extra information, either attributes or metadata. <clears throat> so the lowest level is D. And this is for existing records, cursory site inspections, just asking someone who used to live in the area where this thing could be. So it's just anecdotal type of thing. And you're supposed to then say even have some attributes to go with this, things like the owners and information. So it's all listed down there, the things you're expected if you follow this standard. Uh, data was captured, the source of the information. You know, surprise, surprise, fancy wanting this sort of information. But it's all spelled now, so if people follow this standard, this is what they have to provide. So it's really, this one's for most, what most people have in their GIS system. Mostly they don't have a clue what it is, where it came from or whatever, dial before you dig, stuff like that. Nowadays people are going and say, look, it's virtually just D, we don't know much about it, so let's start trying to make it better in the future. So uh, as it mentions there, dial before you dig, just someone's plans, markups and so on. So that's the D level, the bottom of the scale. Then you go to C which is supposed to be uh, something nearby, approximate location that you can uh, go through. So it's supposed to be a minimum requirement for that is that you've got some relative spatial information. So you know something fairly well and you're coming off it. Again, you're supposed to have attributes to go with it and there's all sorts of things going in there about uh, what you're supposed to do. And then in this case, it's supposed to be plus or minus 300 millimetres from some surface location. So because they're talking about here in things underground, so they, that's why they keep talking about surface as well. But you're starting to say, hey, at least you know with plus or minus 300 millimetres. Uh, so again, they've got extra information. You give it a CL minus C when it's of that uh, C quality. And again, it's just uh, improved. So it's an improvement over what you had before where you just took it off some sort of plan with no idea what was going on. So it's the next step up. And again, there's a whole lot of limitations from that. You can rely on it to a certain amount. It's probably like Telstra data. Who really knows where it is? It's probably D actually, thinking about it. So um, it, it's enough to uh, give you an idea maybe how you found it, it's fairly. So again, you might have just seen something on the uh, surface and a few other saps. Some of them I said, yes, it's nearby that pipe and so on. But you've got a little bit more information about it. B starts coming up to where you need uh, relative subsurface information and this is where you're starting to tie it down a lot more. So B is starting to get a lot more important. Again, the whole of attributes to go with it. So on the surface, again, plus or minus 300 millimetres of somewhere on the surface and then it starts talking about horizontal and vertical tolerance. So a lot of the others just say, well, it's more or less there, but where it is up and down vertical, we don't know too much. So here you're starting to say vertically it's in plus or minus 500 millimetres, so plus or minus uh, half a metre. 
Again, there's a whole lot of attributes. You're supposed to be able to collect with it. And it's starting to indicate where things are in three dimensions. So now we're starting to talk about placing it properly with an X, Y and a Z location. But it still could be just relative to something. So in this case, yes, it's there, but it, uh, you're still fairly vague about where it actually is and it could still be relative to something else rather than some sort of absolute position. So uh, again, could get from various places and it, you're supposed to say what these are with your attributes so you know where this data is coming from. Uh, then you get to A, which is the sort of top of the range, although there is an A plus being we moved in Queensland, I'll mention that shortly. So in this case, you've got an absolute position. So you know exactly where it is. In MGA, it says you're supposed to be in Australia, so using MGA coordinates. So you have to have your MGA coordinates for it. And so basically, you know exactly where it is, information about the attributes and things. And so everything is absolute to plus or minus 50 millimetres. So we're starting to tie it down here. So once someone puts in there that's an A, you should know exactly where it is. So if someone, that's the whole idea of it, you've got your A, B, C's and D's, so all of a sudden you're starting to know exactly where this data's come from. A lot of metadata go with it. In this case, you say QL minus A to say it's at A level. So it's going to give its precise precision in three dimensions. And often things about size, condition, material type, all those sorts of things. There's a whole lot of attributes for those things as well. Um, you don't know what's the internal structure. It is only talking about its position. It's not saying what's actually inside it. So it doesn't go the full hog. But again, if you can get it down to plus or minus 50 millimetres, that's a pretty good start. Uh, here, you're supposed to then go and look at it and it should be exposed. Good idea to pick it up before you bury it. Uh, you're supposed to be able to look along the whole thing. If you've got a line or a pipe, you just can't pothole it you have to be able to say line of sight down it to see what's inside or put the old light or run something through it. You can't just say, oh yes, the pipe's here and here with a pothole, great, that's an A. You can't do that at all. We'll mention that just in a second. Now this standard actually just didn't come out of nowhere. The US had a standard and we actually went to all these talks. One of the firms here ran around these people saying, this is fantastic. The US standard does have nothing about the 3D. And we asked them about that, oh, 3D is too hard. None of our people could provide for 3D. Lucky in Australia, New Zealand, they got a bit smarter and so they have added in all the 3D information as well. What's the use of knowing where the bloody things are if you don't know where they're in 3D? But I suppose that's the Yanks for you. <laughs> Why are we actually interested in uh, SUI? It's an Australian standard and groups are starting to talk about it and you'll start hearing your clients talking about it. Government authorities, people like that, councils, they start to say, right, there's a standard and we'll start using it. It's made everyone aware that most of the data they've got, I was going to say crap, but I couldn't say that, it's not very good and most of it's D-level. But they're now starting to really think about they should have this information to go with it. It has lots of attributes, as you can see. So for us, that's uh, great. There's varying levels of quality along a string and this is what people probably scares people the most or they've got to think about. And so you're going to need information about every point. Each point could have a different level. Each segment can have a different level of quality. So you need vertex attributes and you need segment attributes as well as whole string attributes. So you need all those things to, go, uh, to make it useful. And luckily we have all of those things. And so your example here is you say that yes, you may have picked up two points, A and B, and you may have potholed somewhere in between, and so they might be A. But if you can't directly see between those points, that connection is a B. And so it has to be recorded as a B. So it's not just, oh yeah, I potholed everywhere, I know where they are, so the whole thing's an A. So you have to know where every weak thing is and actually record it as such. So you're going to have to use attributes from every segment and every vertex and heaps of attributes on each of them. So basically, uh, we have attributes, as you know, and so what we have is different symbols, so you can have those different symbols to know the different qualities at each level. And what we've done in version 12 is a super string can now also have different line styles on every segment. 
Not many people have asked that before, so we haven't bothered about it. But now you can see that you might want to have, if it's a plan, if it's an A, a B, a 3, then you want some different symbology on your line style. So now you can have different symbols on each point and vertex, and you also can have different line styles on every segment. So you can set your system up, so you can see quite easily in a uh, plan or a diagram for people, everything's there and all the attribute information is there as well. And so we can handle this exactly this case, but you can have different line styles, so you can have dot dash lines or whatever you want to show you the different things in there. So 12D is suitable, very, very suitable. The only product in the world I actually know that is totally fits the SUI standard like a uh, hand inside a glove. So if you are, do hear about it, those magic AS words, there's a talk this afternoon about picking up data and providing it in this sort of form. Uh, so don't be scared of it. You've got all the tools to be able to work with it.